Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by 90 Min. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and we are starting a brand new series. And on this series, we're going to be talking to personalities from the world of sports media, finding out about their stories, finding out about their best moments, their worst moments. We're going to be talking to them about their fantastic careers so far. And I'm delighted to be joined by the wonderful Ali Drew. Ali, welcome to the show. Um, first of all, thank you for being here because I know you're super, super busy. Uh, but how are you, first of all? Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Glad that the lockdown's easing a little bit and uh, we're starting to get back closer to normal life. But yeah, okay, can't complain. I could, my, my team could be doing a bit better, but other than that, uh, you know, we can live with that. Um, so Ali, I had the pleasure of talking to you um, on, on your show uh, a few days ago and, and it was great fun and, and I'm a massive fan of your work. Was being in the, the world of sports media something that you always wanted to do? Is it something you fell into? How did it come about? Yeah, so I've always knew I wanted to do something in sports, sports and exercise. Um, obviously, I just, I did, I was really a sporty child and just, or, you know, always doing different sports. And and then when I went to university, I studied sports and exercise science. Um, knowing that I wanted to do something in sports and exercise, but not really knowing what it was. I also knew that I wanted to do presenting as well. So it took me a while to actually put the two together and realise maybe like sports presenting would be the one. Um, but yeah, it's just always, it's always been the interest. Sports is, is just my my interest. It's what I'm interested in. It's what I like doing. It's what I like watching. So yeah, there's there's no better career really than, than doing it you know for a job absolutely it is fantastic and it is when you care about your job that, that's what they say isn't it you never work a day in your life and it really does uh well i'm not going to say it feels like that every day because i've had days where i've been like tearing my hair up but most days anyway uh, it's a pretty pleasurable experience um you've done all sorts though in the past you've done reality tv um you've been a model you, you've done personal training um and i'm sure i've missed some stuff out as well Talk to me about reality TV, because I'm always really interested in how reality TV can. I'm not going to say, well, it does change your life, but how does it kind of impact you going forward? Is it did you see it as a positive experience? Were there negatives involved in it? How did you kind of find the whole reality TV thing? Um, I mean, reality TV wasn't what I intended on doing. I never really intended on doing it at all. Um, but they approached me to do it and I just thought, well, you know, I'm trying to, at that point I was trying to do presenting and it was, it was a slow process. I'd done all the training and it was, it was taking a lot longer than I thought. So I thought, well, this can only be a, a good thing, surely to open up, you know, doors, get, get me more exposure. And um, so I thought, right, let's just go for it. So I did it and um, I'm, I love the experience. You know, I, I went in there knowing what, how I wanted to sort of come across, what I was going to do in there, what I wasn't going to do. Um, so I, I was pleased that I, I came across very well. I came across as me. Um, I didn't do anything that I regret on there. You know, I didn't get drunk or do anything stupid. So, yeah, I think, to be honest, looking back, it was, like, one of the best things I've ever done. I don't know if I'd do it again, like, if I had another opportunity. Um, I don't think I'd probably do reality TV again. But I'm glad I did that because it was just a, an experience of a lifetime, really. And, and I did gain what I wanted to from it. What's the hardest thing, though, about doing reality TV? Because I can imagine having your your life in the spotlight, it can be quite difficult. And, and you was on X on the Beach, which is obviously a very popular program. So you probably were walking around and, and getting spotted and things like that. But what's the hardest thing about it? Because I can't envisage it being as, as easy as, as some people make it out to be. Yeah, I mean, the, the actual filming of it was quite difficult because obviously the type of show I was on, there was a lot of arguments and a lot of people who, you know, didn't really know you but did disliked you on the show. So filming, I found quite hard. The first few days, especially where everyone was arguing, I'm not really like that. And there was a lot of sort of nastiness and it's just not really me. Um, but once you get your head around that and you just kind of ignore it, then obviously when it airs, you've got people on social media having their opinion on you, saying about the way you look, saying, you know, that they don't like you even though they don't know you. It's, that was quite difficult. Um, to get your head around for sure and um, people spot like seeing you when you're out was was weird that was weird like, like it's, it's completely gone now but at the time it was it was a bit odd because you sort of forget people are staring at you and you're like why why are they staring at me and then you think oh maybe they watched the show um 
but yeah, I mean, the social media side of it was hard, you know, where you get trolls and people having an opinion on the way you look or, you know, it's just, it's crazy that the way I look should even affect someone who doesn't know me. But yeah, that was probably the hardest out of everything. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I mean, I I get trolls on social media and all I do is talk about Arsenal. So I can imagine sort of putting y- yourself in the spotlight like that in, in a bit of a it's, a, it's a vulnerable position to be in, to put yourself there and, and then to have to deal with the trolls. And, and when the attacks are all personal, you know, the attacks on me are about my opinions about Arsenal, which I can take. Um, but I can only imagine it, it is quite difficult. You said you have no regrets of, of, of what you did on reality TV, how it went. Um, what was the best part of it, though? You know, because people talk about, you know, it, for you, it's open doors and it's been great. But if you could pick out one highlight from your time on X on the beach, what would it be? Um, the best bit by an absolute mile was before I even went in the villa. It was filming the coming out the sea scenes, you know, where you sort of emerge on the sea. Yeah. They were the best. They just, it, they're just incredible. They make you feel like amazing. And, you know, you just like, it's like you're on a you know, film set. You feel like, like a movie star because you're just doing, filming quite a few scenes and takes of it. And it's just, that's, that was my favourite bit by a mile. I was so excited for that bit. It sort of went downhill until I got in the villa, but that bit, I was like, <laughs> can't wait for that to be <laughs> It's almost like a James Bond film, isn't it? Yeah, the way you come out of work. Fantastic. Amazing. So you, you always wanted to do sports presenting or or sports before um that what was your kind of first break into the sports media world when did you really feel like i'm, I'm getting somewhere now because it can be quite a difficult industry to break into and it can be quite disheartening at times so when was the first moment where you felt like yeah this is going the way i want it to go yeah i mean for years i was doing um i did sort of fitness like body power i did some presenting at body power um, I did some rugby stuff because obviously I'm from Wales and it's rugby's massive. Um, but they were still quite few and far between, you know, stuff. I did some for um, some sort of motorsports because I worked as a grid girl. So I also did some presenting there. But the first time that I felt like I was getting somewhere was when I started doing it for the boxing. So I started working for a channel called British Boxers, um, who are massive. They're a massive boxing channel. And... I basically was doing interviews for them and um, doing sort of intros and outros to their videos. And it was the first time that I was regularly getting presenting work. I was working with amazing people. You know, I was interviewing top, top people, you know, Ricky Hatton and world champions. And that was when I really felt like I'm doing, this is what I want to do. I'm getting to do it. I'm actually getting somewhere. So yeah, that I'd say working for British boxers was the, was the first thing that I thought, yeah, I'm, this is, I'm doing, I'm really doing it. Is boxing your favourite sport then, or, yeah. or or is it one that you just you work the mo- mostly in, and and that's why? No, boxing is, is it always my favourite sport? I I did I do love um I love football and I do love other sports. I did track and field, I did athletics for years, so I'm very interested in that. But I love boxing. You know, I watched it when I was growing up. My dad did a bit of boxing, and he's a boxing fan. So yeah, I I love boxing. It's just exciting, and yeah, that's that's my favourite of all sports. So, as uh, all our listeners are Arsenal fans, we've got to ask you, what's your view on Arsenal? I mean, how do, how do you see Arsenal as a football club? Is it a club that's close to your heart or could you not give a shit, basically? <laughs> do you know what? At the start of the season, I remember we had we had DT on the show, um, you know, from, from AFTV. And I said I was excited about Arsenal this season. I was really excited that they, they I thought they were going to do really well. And I, I actually was really excited about the season they were going to have. I actually thought it was going to be like a sort of breakthrough season for them. So I I like Arsenal. I do. I actually, I, I'm not an Arsenal fan. Though. It's not the team I support. I don't know if I'm going to say what team I support, but it's not we'll the team. We'll come on to that in a minute and yeah. then we'll pull it apart. But I do actually, <laughs> I like Arsenal. I, I do. And I, and I did think they were going to have a better season than they have. I thought, you know, I had high hopes. Yeah, I, I think we all had higher hopes than what we've what we've seen but of course Arsenal at the time of recording still in European competition and fingers crossed we can salvage that season so that brings me on nicely to who do you actually support and then my next question and reaction will be dependent on the answer <laughs> so I support Man United oh I knew it yes. I, I just knew it I knew yeah, it yeah so I'm a Man United fan um 
have been since I was a kid. So basically, my I grew up in Southport, um, up north. But my brother, who's he's older than me, he supported United. So therefore, I had to like I got his like hand-me-down you know football shirts and stuff. So I supported Man United from when I was a kid because of him. Um, my family, because I'm Scottish originally, my family support Rangers. So like that's sort of my second team. But I am, yeah, I'm a Man United fan for back in the good old days. Ah, oh, you you've killed me with that, Ali. You've <laughs> killed me with that. I I would put Man United in my top two Hated. most disliked teams. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah easy. It, it's, it's Man United and Tottenham for me all day. Um, in terms of your your presenting career, then, and and as I said at the right at the top of the show, um, you've done all different things. Modeling, um, how's that going? Um, is it something that you still do? Um, you talked about sort of the, the doing the motorsport stuff as well. Uh, are you still kind of active in all of these different areas? And if so, how do you juggle it all? Yeah, so I do still do some modeling. I've never done full time modeling. Like I've never, I'm not good enough to, to be perfectly honest. I'm not good enough to do it full time. But I've always got booked for jobs, and I did used to do it a lot. Um, I do still do it, but just not as much. I'm trying to, as I'm getting older. I'm, one, I'm just getting booked less, like not out of my choice. And also I'm... I'm, I'm sure that's not the case, Ali. I'm sure that's not the case. <laughs> I'm like actively, you know, I'm not looking for it as much as I used to. Um, so yeah, I still do bits, but obviously I'm trying to do mainly presenting. Um, the grid girl stuff I haven't done for a while now. Um, and I was a ring girl for boxing as well. But again, I haven't done that for a while now. Um, and I do still do personal training. So I, I still have one-to-one -one clients with my PT my PT clients. What's being a ring girl like? Because how do I put this? It, do, do you feel like everybody's just gawping at you? Like to, to put it bluntly, does it feel like that being as a ring girl? I thought that I did think that at the beginning when I used to do this, I did really small hall shows and um, I did some white collar boxing ring girl work. I did um, some, some real small hall shows. And then I obviously got, I started working for Frank Warren. Um, at the beginning and the small hall shows, I did think that that was the case. I felt like, you know, we were just being gawped at. It was a bit, not seedy, but you just felt almost uncomfortable sometimes. But then when I started working for Frank Warren, because it's such a big platform and you're yeah. miles away from the crowd, it doesn't really feel like that. Um, so I actually, I just got to know people in boxing. It was, it was actually brilliant for me to make connections because I, I met so many people doing it for so long. that then when I started doing the interviews... I knew them already, so I could contact them saying, can you do an interview? You know, it, it, it did actually benefit me massively. But no, I mean, we, we got looked after well at, at Frank Warren. Yeah, no, and 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 I wanted to ask that question. I I didn't I don't want to put it across in the wrong way, but you know, there's there is that kind of that element to it as well. And and it must, you know, we talked about feeling vulnerable when you're on a TV show where everybody's nose is in your business. And so, uh, you know, I, I know that people go up at ring girls. So, uh, you know, it just um, it's interesting to see it from the other side. And because and yeah, when I did it, there was actually the the whole they were, they were trying to ban them. You know, they banned the walk on girls. At the yeah. Darts, yeah, which yeah. I actually did as well. I did do a bit of walk on work with the darts before it got banned. Um, and then they were saying they want to ban you know ring girls. And um, to be fair, I don't feel like there would be any need to ban it because one, I choose to do it. I, I feel I don't feel vulnerable when I'm doing it. You know, like there's so that I was very, very sure that why would you need to ban it? You know, this it's not it's just part of boxing. It's you know, yeah. I, I was felt very strongly that it definitely shouldn't be banned. Yeah, and as you say, you know, it's your it's your choice to do it. So um and you're right, it is part of the sport, it's part of the culture of the sport. It is what it is. And um yeah, you know, I, I could totally get that and I agree with you on that. In terms of the the presenting, then going back again to that. Have you ever had any moments in your career where you feel like you've messed something up? You felt like you just wanted the ground to swallow you? Because I've had that happen to me and I've done nowhere near as high profile stuff as you've done. Uh, so what's your kind of worst moment in the presenting world that you can think of or most embarrassing moment, I guess? Um, it's always horrific when you say someone's name wrong or you know like you, you know their name but you just say it wrong or you have to sort of re-say their name I think once in an interview I said I can't remember what I, I think I said someone's their fighter's name instead of the coach's name Um, it wasn't like that bad I just said and then obviously I knew the, I didn't even know the fighter I knew the coach so I was like I don't know why I've just done that but that's always bad you think god the, the least like I should get right is their name 
Um, but it's just, you, you do just mess up. And like, I'm quite lucky that I've not done loads and loads of live stuff. So anything you get wrong, you can just re redo the take. Yeah. Um, I got a location. I was interviewing um, Steve, Steve Robinson from Cardiff, the former world champion. And I said about a fight that he had in Cardiff. And he was like, I, no, it wasn't in Cardiff. And I was like, no, I think it was. And he was like, no, it wasn't. It didn't happen in Cardiff. And I was like, no, I'm sure that fight happened in Cardiff. He was like, no, I would know. Like, it didn't happen. And I was like, yeah, okay. So we'll just cut this bit out because obviously I've got my facts wrong. <laughs> yes, yeah, start again. Exactly. <laughs> what about sort of your best moment where you felt the biggest buzz, um, you know, a moment in your career where you've gone, yeah, this is this is where I want to be. Um, Probably... I mean, it's been difficult because I've had some massive moments over the last year, but they've been over Zoom. So, you know, I interviewed Eddie Hearn, but it was over Zoom. Um, and it was amazing to interview him, but over Zoom, it's just not the same. Um, last week, I returned to the boxing shows and it was amazing. That was just, an, it's been, it was a year and two months since I was last at a boxing show. So that was probably my favourite moment ever, was just being able to interview them at a show, watch the show see like the winners afterwards i just it was just the best feeling being back it's been so long and you just appreciate it so much more now yeah i can i don't only imagine and obviously you're working uh alongside frank warren everybody knows anybody who's anybody in the world of sport knows uh who frank warren is what's he like on a sort of one-to-one -one level is he is he down to earth do you feel a little bit um starstruck when you're around him was it like that at the beginning and maybe eased off how would you describe frank warren as a, as a man yeah i mean obviously i was ring girl in frank warren so i've i've met frank warren about six years ago maybe um so i've known him for quite a long time and at first yeah, you felt like you couldn't really speak to him you felt like you didn't want to even really say hello if he said hello you'd say hello back but that would be it and you think oh god that's frank warren there or you'd have to be really honest if frank warren was like had come out ring really ring size but now he's he's just really nice that you don't get when you interview him he's just gives you great answers but you feel like you can ask him anything you know he, he's just I think he's he's really down to earth and he's been in the game you know a long 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 time he's an absolute legend in boxing but he's just like when you interview him, he's just like a, a nice a nice guy you know he just I I really like him I find him really easy to talk to that's brilliant and and it's great to have that kind of close contact and, and relationship with people that you work with for sure. Um, AJ Fury, what's going to happen there, Ali? I mean, I've got my opinion on who I'd like to see win. I, I'd like to see Fury win. I, I For me, he's the more, I'm not going to say that Joshua is not very technical, but I prefer what Tyson Fury brings to a boxing ring. I love his character. I love his style. Um, I think he gets into people's heads really well. And, and I love him as a, and I'm a, I would say I'm a casual boxing fan. So I want Tyson Fury to win. Who do you want to win? And, and how do you see that one going when eventually uh, they get it on? Well, that's such a tough one. I've never been so 50, 50 changed my mind so much on a fight ever. Normally, even if you want someone to win, you can normally say who you think will win. Even if it's the other person, you still have an idea of who you think will win. Um, but this one, I genuinely have changed my mind quite a few times. I just hope it does happen in July or beginning of August, like they're saying. Uh, we need it to happen ASAP. It's just so huge. But I do think that Fury will win, just based on what we've seen, how, it, how adaptable he is, you know, when he's he's... You, you don't think he can box a certain way or he can fight a certain way. And then he does, you know, and, and just to come back from that first fight with Wilder, you know, when he got what looked like completely knocked out. I just think it's, it's, I'd say I'm probably 51%, 49% towards Fury. But it does, but then when I actually sit down and think, I'm like, would AJ lose? I, I don't think, I don't know. Has he learned his lesson from that? You know, where you got yeah. to see it before, but yeah, I'd say maybe I'm leaning towards Fury. Have you have you met Tyson Fury? Have you ever sort yeah, of come I've face to face? I've never interviewed him. I've met him. He's been obviously ringside, like when I've been there. Um, he's and he seems he's always really nice, really just a great guy, isn't he? He's just got the personality like you can't. It's very hard not to like him. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what I love about Tyson Fury as well is sort of outside of what he does in the ring, we know he's had struggles outside of that. And, and then to be able to 
to focus on a fight almost seems to really help him, doesn't it? And it's just, it shows people that if you are struggling with mental health, if you can channel your energy and your mind into a certain thing that you care about and you're passionate about, it can be a massive help. And we've seen him look, look at points where, you know, he might never fight again. And all of a sudden he's back and he's, and he's back at the top. So yeah. Um, fantastic to see him uh, back in the ring and hopefully it's, it's very soon and hopefully he wins. Uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna make any secrets of my allegiances on that one. Um, Ali, am I right in saying that you've got your own business as well um, outside of the, the sporting world? Um, tell us a little bit about it and how it came about. Yes. Do you mean my, uh, my dog clothing? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> the most random thing ever. Um, yeah. So I have a dog clothing company called Animal Attire. Um, it started off when I got my dog, Brian, so my sausage dog. I, I'm just so obsessed with him. I've had him five years now, but I'm so obsessed. It's just ridiculous. So it got, it, after a couple of months of having him, I thought I'm spending so much of my time just doing nothing with him, just being with him, you know, cuddling him, spending, I was dressing him up all the time. So he's always had, he's always worn clothes. So he actually quite likes wearing, like if you start, if you bring a jumper out, he'll pick his paw up to put his, like his little legs in, in the sleeves of the jumper. Um, so I thought, right, everyone's asking me where these clothes are from. I love dressing him up. I'm with him all the time. I need to do something where I'm actually earning money from all this time that I'm spending doing nothing. And I've got so many ideas of clothes that I want him to wear that don't exist. So I was like, right, I'm going to start a, a clothing company. So I started it off online. And, um, and yeah, and it's, and it's going really well. It's, brilliant. Uh, well, That's good it's to hear. been brilliant since the lockdown. because obviously it's just all online. So it's been able to carry on. And, and obviously Brian's the face of it. There we go. He's he's become a model as well. Yeah. Um, I, I he's guess got an agent as well. He does out not just for me. He does proper modelling. Like there's actually dog agents than I've ever got. He's models for Nets, PK <laughs> Max. Oh yeah, he, he's absolutely killed me on the modelling front. <laughs> I had no idea that dogs had uh, had agents. That's incredible yeah. news to me, but incredible news nonetheless. And it's, it's such good money because they have to pay for the dog and for the owner. Like he, he I've never been paid what he gets paid. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's you just want to throw in the towel for the modelling. Yeah, give up. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know, we've we've talked about all the things that you've done and that, that you, you're continuing to do, and there's so many things. Where do you have, find the time? Where do you find the time to do all of these things? Keep going, stay motivated. How do you do it? It's tough. Yeah, I am very busy, um, really busy actually. But I've always been like that. I, I just like I work hard. Um, I've always been just sort of dedicated just to working. Like I'm, I, you know, I, I've got to. Like I, you know, I, I'm, I live on my own. I've got my own mortgage. You know, I need to pay my bills, so I have to. If I don't, I'm self-employed. So if I don't work, I don't get paid. Um, but I've just always been really, really hard working. And I know that I won't get to where I want to be unless I put in the hours and put in the work. Um, so with my presenting, like, I'll just keep working, keep working. And then everything else that I'm doing, I just need, I need to do it in order to, you know, have... It, it, I, basically, I need to have that to live, all the other stuff. And then, you know, I can... Then once, once I'm established, hopefully... I'll have a bit more spare time. You know, once once I'm where I'm, you know, yeah. I want to be with my presenting, I can maybe cut down on everything else. But I've just got to juggle everything until until I do get there. Yeah, and I admire your work ethic because it's needed, particularly in an industry like this. I guess one of my final questions would be, what advice would you give uh, to a young person wanting to break into this industry? Um, what would be your kind of key tips? What would you tell yourself if you could go back a few years and, and, and sort of give yourself some advice in, in the beginning of your journey towards sports presenting? I would say just don't give up. So although it seems like you're not getting anywhere, every single thing that you do will be beneficial in the end. So everything happens for a reason. So even if you don't understand you know, why you're doing all these things for free, they will lead to other things. So you just keep going. Don't, don't give up. Um, that I'd say like that is the most important because there's so many times that you, I think oh, I could have just I just won't bother oh, I can't do this not happening I need to just stop but you just have to keep going like hundred percent and make as many connections meet people speak to people and it's it's all about who you know and you just got to get as many connections get out there network as much as you can yeah absolutely great advice sound advice and and just the final thing I, I want to ask you basically because. We've been talking over the last couple of days to sort of arrange this interview. And um, 
I know that you're obviously in isolation now uh, for a boxing show. What's the whole process like now? Because we're obviously in lockdown and you're having to go into bubbles. Is it, you know, how, how are you finding it? How's, how's it going kind of sort of behind the scenes? Yeah, I mean, it is very different. So we have to arrive sort of in the beginning of the week. For the, so the show's on Friday, so we've had to arrive today. Um, you have a sort of, there's a press conference today where you're all masked up, everyone's sort of spread apart. Um, normally the press conference is crazy. You're all like pushing to get past each other, but it's been, you know, everyone's social distance. And then you go and get your COVID test and then you go self-isolate. We get our results around midday tomorrow. And then literally as soon as you get your negative, you're out doing all your interviews, which you would have probably had time to do before. Um, so it's, it, it seems like there's more of a rush to do things, you know, because you've got less, even though you're in it all week, which normally you wouldn't be, you've obviously is just self-isolating. And then at the show, um, you have to wear masks. You know, there's masks as you're going around. Everything's set out differently. You know, there's no crowds, which is the biggest, weirdest thing ever. You just, it's just silent. It's so weird to go in. Like we're watching from like behind the curtain and it's just silence in there it's weird but I mean all we can be thankful for is that it's still going on you know there's still sports happening because for a while there wasn't there was no last at the start of you know lockdown one all sports stopped so even if it's with no crowds and the way it is I will take it so long as it keeps going yeah absolutely and it wasn't just you know a, a lack of sport there was a lack of interest in sport I found because yeah. I was like when the first lockdown hit and football stopped and, and my world revolves around football my work revolves around football and I got to the point where I was like okay well we're in lockdown but I'm going to keep plugging away I'm going to do podcasts on historic Arsenal matches I'm going to get in touch with some Arsenal legends and do interviews with them and the numbers were just awful and it, and I put so much effort and work into content that I thought was actually quite good and probably some of the best I've ever done but the interest was just not there it was just everything else had, had taken precedent obviously rightly so uh, but it's so good to just be back sort of um, covering sport and people being interested in it again, isn't it? It's, it's, it's so important for us. I bet you can't wait to be back in the stadium. And uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've been really lucky because I've, I've been one of the few people that's been able to go on a couple of occasions. Mm. Um, but just to go in and, and I went to one of the games that Arsenal had 2000 fans yeah. in for. It just wasn't the same. You know, I went to turn to my mate to, to talk to him about what had just happened and he was about two meters away from me and it, it just wasn't the same um so you know yeah i can't wait to get back and i'm sure you can't wait to welcome the crowds back oh, at the God. boxing as well i know i never thought because sometimes it's like you know if the crowds are annoying or they're fighting or whatever you're like oh god it's very busy or you can't get through but like i'll take annoying crowds people asking for photos all day long just to get them all back just to get the atmosphere back yeah, absolutely. For sure. Ali, how can people uh, follow you on social media and keep up with the great work you do? Tell them about Sportology as well um, and how they can uh, keep up to date with that and all the brilliant content. Yeah, so you can follow my personal um, socials is Miss Ali Drew on Twitter and Instagram. And then Sportology, which is the um, sports YouTube channel, which I run, which is we focus on football, boxing, some UFC I'm hoping to branch out for more sports. Um, that's obviously on YouTube, so Sportology TV. The same on socials, so you can uh, get following that because it's we get some good guests. You put on. There you go. Top quality guests. What more can I say? What more, what more do you want? <laughs> exactly. And I'll leave the links in the description. So make sure you check those out. Make sure you give the video a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you're interested in becoming a member, click on the link in the description. Ali, thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to speaking to you again, hopefully in the very near future. Thanks for having me on. Great talking to you.